This morning is from Psalms chapter 80, verses 1 to 3, a psalm of lament and a plea for restoration. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim. Shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved.
Our New Testament lesson today is from Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. The Gospel reading reports Joseph's marriage to Mary and the birth of Jesus. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they had lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what was spoken of by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. Life is unpredictable. Would you agree? You know how it goes. You have everything all planned out, and then something unexpected happens and complicates everything. It might be an accident or a health crisis, maybe a death or a divorce that changes the trajectory of your life. It could be a change for the good, a better job, a new relationship, or perhaps a baby. I wonder how it was for Mary and Joseph suddenly finding out that there was a baby, and not just any baby. We like to romanticize their story, to make it a love story, but it may not have been exactly as we imagine. Their marriage, like most in that culture, probably would have been arranged. Did Mary really have a choice? Did she love Joseph? Or did she marry him because it was her duty? In the process of a Jewish marriage in their time, there were three steps. Step one was the engagement not a romantic declaration of intent as in our day, but a legally binding contract. Sometimes marriages were arranged by the parents when couples were just children. And often it would be a young girl engaged to an older man. Step two was the betrothal, which was a year-long agreement when the couple was considered to be man and wife, but not yet living together and bound in covenant marriage. Step three was the actual marriage. Now, because they were considered man and wife already in step two, when Mary became pregnant, Joseph had to make a difficult choice. He must have felt great distress a sense of betrayal, disappointment, and a host of other emotions. Matthew's account focuses mostly on Joseph. What was he to think when Mary told him she was pregnant before they had lived together? He could only conclude that she had been unfaithful to him, which left him with basically two choices. He could publicly shame her, in which case, according to Deuteronomic law, she would likely have been stoned. Or he could divorce her quietly. 
Now Matthew describes Joseph as a righteous man and not wanting to expose Mary and her family to public disgrace and likely punishment, he chose the latter. But then unexpectedly, he was offered a third option. Matthew tells us that an angel visited him in a dream and told him not to be afraid. That's what angels always say. <laughs> to take Mary as his wife. For this child is from the Holy Spirit. The angel told him to name the baby Jesus, which derives from the Hebrew Yeshua, meaning to deliver or to save. Then Matthew connects this to the prophecy from Isaiah 7. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. For Isaiah, the birth of a child, perhaps the child of the king of Judah, is meant to be a sign that God is present and hasn't abandoned God's people. Matthew applied this to the birth of Jesus. And so waking from his sleep, Joseph did an unexpected thing. Although he had already decided to divorce Mary, the dream had changed his mind. It was the right thing for this righteous man to do. He stayed with her through the birth and afterward, raising Jesus as his own. And surely he knew, in that patriarchal culture, how crucial the firstborn son was to the family lineage and property inheritance. Joseph must have known that he would have to give up all of that for Jesus. As far as we can tell, from the few mentions of Joseph in the scriptures from here on, he and Mary stayed together, although many suspect that he had died by the time Jesus began his public ministry. Marriage is such a big step by itself. And yet, Mary and Joseph had so much more to deal with. Human feelings that raised questions of trust and betrayal. It's difficult for us to think of them as a regular married couple trying to raise a family and loving God. They had been through a lot. Mary had to deal with inexplicably becoming pregnant, the fear of what Joseph might do, and to trust that God would explain this strange event to Joseph. He had to trust that God had a plan and that seeing an angel wasn't just a bad dream. It was a great sacrifice for both of them, simply to believe and to walk through a very hard time together. They were likely ridiculed, gossiped about, and judged by their families and friends. But there is so much the stories in scripture do not tell us. To come up with a more complete birth narrative, we conflate the accounts from Matthew and Luke and add a touch of imagination. Luke gives us the manger and shepherds and angels singing and even a mental picture of the baby himself. Matthew focuses on Joseph and says only briefly that Jesus was born and that they named him. Perhaps this Christmas, as we read Matthew's account, we might see a little bit more than the genealogy of Jesus and a short story of how God's Son came to be one of us. We might also see a story of encouragement and trust, a story of faith and hope. Yet we must be careful not to go chasing exegetical and theological rabbits, and in doing so, miss the point of this important passage. It's easy for us to forget that Joseph and Mary and Jesus 
were not merely figures from stained glass windows or nativity scenes, but they were real people who struggled even as we do. People like us, with ups and downs in their relationships. Matthew paints a picture of really how normal the Holy Family was. Most of the world was unaware of the birth of a baby in a stable in Bethlehem, which is the point. Jesus came as one of us, born as we are, lived as we live, loved and laughed as we do. What is exceptional about this couple and this birth is that through them, God came to us. As Lutheran scholar David Lowe's explains it, God comes through ordinary mixed up people in order to save ordinary mixed up people. Each of us have experienced major upheavals in our lives. Indeed, this morning as we sit here, some of you may be struggling just to hold it together, dealing with personal issues, family discord, erosion of relationships, worry over what the future may bring, concerns over jobs and financial security, or perhaps just seeking acceptance and love. Our culture expects joy in this season, and we really try. But we also acknowledge, just as we did at last night's longest night service, that sometimes we all struggle, especially at this time of year. This story reminds us that God worked through real people with real challenges, people who go through all kinds of things, yet are used to accomplish God's purposes. It wasn't a fairy tale princess who was chosen to bear God's son, but an unwed young girl. It wasn't a royal heir who was chosen to name and raise Jesus, but a simple carpenter with his own doubts and questions. In the messiness of that situation, God came. Emmanuel, God with them. God with us. The name itself, Emmanuel, tells us that God really is with us. This story assures us that God still calls ordinary people. People like Joseph and Mary. People like us. To bring Christ to the world. May it be so this Christmas and always. Amen.